This week, three sides of the coin. It's the Kiss Cruise recap. Mark's back. We've got Frank from Hate Breed, who was also on the cruise. Really fun discussion. Most importantly, Mark seems to think the women on the cruise were raging for him. Is that true? I got to hear. Of course it's not. Somebody who was on the Kiss Cruise has to tell me, were you raging for Mark? This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. Uh, Two of us right now, Mike and Tommy. Mark is here. and Mark is here. Mark leaves. Um, It's typical. He comes and goes. He sets his own schedule. It's like he almost owns this show. Didn't we hire him? Um, Anyway, we've got an incredible show this week. We're going to skip comments. I will make a quick mention right up front here. We are going to have a three sides of the coin Georgia meetup to celebrate Lisa's 50th birthday party. It will be Friday, December 3rd at the Wild Wing Cafe in Alpharetta, Georgia. Show up around 8 p.m. The band starts at 9. Celebrate with Lisa. Sing happy birthday to her. Please do. You're all invited. Um, all right. So this week, we've got a returning guest. Frank from Hate Breed is back. He was on the Kiss Cruise. He sits down with us and Mark, talks all about the Kiss Cruise, the good. It wasn't really any bad. A couple of sure. things that they would have liked a little differently, but basically two thumbs up on the cruise talk set lists everything else and we actually have a really kind of deep discussion at the very end with frank about touring bands and covid and the covid protocol sort of tied into the the rolling stone article and what was his take because he just got off the road you know hate breed was opening for megadeth so that was a major tour just like the kiss tour so stick to the end for a very cool discussion otherwise let it roll We got Frank from Hatebreed joining us. Want to get your official three sides of the coin logo and shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. So for our huge uh, Kiss Cruise recap that we teased everybody about last week, um, we've only got Frank from Hatebreed who was on the cruise. Apparently, Mark, hey, Mark, are you out there? Mark? Mark's a no-show. Yes, sir. For his own show about recapping the Kiss Cruise. Because let me let me just give everybody a little bit of background here. So... Kiss Cruise is done chatting with Mark online. And Mark is like, that Frank guy, we had him on. So cool. Such a great guy. He wants to come on and he's going to join the recap with me. And he's like, Mike, go get, go confirm, get Frank on the show. I'm like, okay, immediately get it done. And I'd let, let Mark know. And Mark's like, this is going to be awesome. This is great. This is great. Today, Mark sends a message. Uh, I'm slammed. I'm going to be at least a half hour late getting here. Now we know that a half hour late means grumpy Mark, <laughs> which means <laughs> he may not show up at all. So, so Tommy and I will give our recap of the cruise. It was fun. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, Tommy, this is, just expected right it was like, it really it's like wh- what do you got to do to get him to show up for something that he knows more about than either one of us well considering he was the one that went and we didn't i i was joking with tommy frank i'm like you know about the only way we can make sure that mark shows up is if we guarantee a doordash dinner delivery as soon as he sits down <laughs> and logs in oh wow like how about how about that what, crab. what what you know, maybe we should do a GoFundMe with all of our listeners to raise money to feed Mark every week so he shows up on time to the show. 
a per diem, if you will. So to speak, yes. yes exactly, yes. yes. He gets free food. If he shows up on time and is logged in successfully, now these, there's all these requirements. We will have DoorDash deliver a different meal every week. I mean, who wouldn't want that? No, I, 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 hey, that's some incentive, I got to say. <laughs> I mean, and look, you know, look at Mark. Food, that is the incentive. That's the incentive <laughs> that drives him away from recording with us. It's like, okay, dinner's ready. Mark's got to leave now. Well, you know, I mean, he's 0 for 2, I think, now, because the last one, I think he was in and out when we were when, when you had me on the first time. So it's oh. becoming very problematic. Yeah, you know, a bit of an ego there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need him here. We're doing a cruise recap. So Yeah, really. Yeah, no I mean, shit. seriously. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, we have plenty of content. And, so you know. so, so it, it's all on you, Frank. All on you now. This whole mm-hmm. success and the quality of this show rests All on your the shoulders. Right Uh-oh. on your shoulders, brother. <laughs> so if any of you are pissed off when you watch this, send it to Frank. Uh-oh. Exactly. I don't want to hear about it. Anymore. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Not, no, no Actually, pressure. Actually, send Frank. it to Mark. Send it yeah, to Mark. Right, right. Mark's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Frank, <laughs> uh, you know, how? Well, let's just, I mean, we don't need to go into your history because we did that the last time, but um, how many Kiss Cruises have you been on? Uh, believe it or not, because obviously I'm working around our touring schedule as well. Yeah. You know, yep. and, and a Kiss Cruise isn't going to take precedent over a Hapri tour, so. Um, oh, how dare you say that to Kiss fans? No, I know. Well, you know. <laughs> I got That's lucky. blasphemous. I, I got lucky, you know, five or six years ago, and, and my bass player had a kid, so he likes to be home for Halloween to go trick or treating with the kid now. And oh, the Kiss Cruise follows around falls on Halloween every year. How convenient for me. Yep. So it all worked out. Um, and I and this was my eighth in a row. But I gotta say, um, I wasn't booked on this cruise. I wasn't gonna go because um for the Kiss Cruisers out there, and you guys may know, around Kiss Cruise five, so I've been th- I've been on three through ten now. Around Kiss okay. Cruise five, they took the picture with the band away. Yep. You, you yeah. weren't you couldn't do that on the boat anymore that was a big deal i mean because obviously that's a that's for the for the guests paying the money and going and attending that holy Remember crap the- hold on mark's here do we have Uh-oh. to do we have to take back everything we said because he's only because no, he's go- late he's okay hold on yeah. hold on let's let's get him connected let's see how well this works He's coming in live, folks, because you, you don't know what is accidentally getting on. You don't know. You don't know what you're going to get when we bring Mark in live. Mark, we're already recording. Eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> and, and, and we already ripped on you. Yeah, totally geez. ripped on you. We're like, we're doing a Kiss Cruise recap without the guy who went on the Kiss Cruise. I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> Loving the, loving the shirt, everybody. I take hey, it wherever I, I take it wherever I go with me. Amen, brother. Nice. One of my faves as well. Yep. So um, the iron fist. So we're just we we're literally just getting started here, Mark. Yeah. So you're you're not. I'm you're actually, I'm actually about twenty minutes ahead of schedule. I know. Than I thought. I let me tell. I'm telling you what, man. I came home from because we stayed till Sunday night. Cause we, we drove from Miami to, uh, to Clearwater and then just fucking partied like madmen. And then, uh, and by partying like madmen, you mean just eating crap loads of shrimp and crap. I swear to God, it's all like partying with men. <laughs> I, I tell you what, just, we, it, it was, it was real. Cause the, we got, we drove across state and the fucking weather sucked. So, you know, when uh, life hands you lemons, you know, make lemonade. So we uh, we had a fucking just a ton of fun. So, you know, it was all good. Anyways, where were you uh, so far in the tales? of? Oh, uh, we were just finding out from Frank his uh, Kiss Cruise history. Mm-hmm. So he yes. was just getting into that. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you, Frank. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that. You are welcome. <laughs> Um, I was just explaining to the guys about um, I wasn't booked on this cruise because um, if you remember around Kiss Cruise 5, they they took the picture with the band away. I thought Mm -hmm. that was a big that was a big blow to the cruisers because that was obviously a big deal. Um, 
And then this year when they announced originally that they were going to take the indoor makeup show away and just do a general admission pool deck. And I, I'm grandfathered into those seats in the front. So I was like this, so at some point you got to tell these guys, no. So I was like, I'm just not going to go. I'm just not going to go. What, did, what did you just say, Frank? I know. I, I think I, you had a spe- I think the, the the video skipped or something. You you said some something about saying no to kiss. Sometimes I, you got to. Sometimes I, I don't. Hey, it was no no to kiss, no to six man, no to Norwegian. But I'm like, so they want to charge more. They don't want to do the indoor makeup show. I'm like, I'm just gonna not go because last year I had the meet and greet with Paul. I had the I won the pick throwing contest with Gene. Uh, it probably wasn't gonna top that last experience for me. So. Um, I originally didn't book and then everybody revolted and I lost my seats and they, and because everybody got mad and COVID and all that, Oh, the cruise is back. The indoor show's back free alcohol for anybody that wants to go on. The cruise <laughs> unlimited. So basically what, what, what you're saying is it didn't matter what kiss gave you free alcohol brought you back. Free alcohol sounded like such a great idea before I got on that boat. <laughs> but let me tell you after the fifth day at sea, it was the dumbest idea. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, but it was we a, must, it, it, we it must have ran into each other probably a dozen times or more in the in the few days. It seemed like we were uh, fist bumping every uh every two hours or so. Yeah, it, was, sure. it was pretty cool. Sure. It was. Uh, I got so a anyways, question though. Wait, wait, I got a question for Frank. So, yes, you're a total oh, forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old joke with Tommy. Yeah. So Frank, <laughs> when you said no and you weren't gonna go. Did, did Sixth Man or anyone ever reach out to you to say, well, why do you not want to book to sweet, it? To sweeten the deal just for you? Well, no, well, just... You know, An- I mean, Anthony, they- Anthony, who's the CEO of Sixth Man, is a good friend of mine. Um, oh. And I just, I just expressed my, um, you know, expressed my reasoning for not doing it. You know what I mean? And then that was that. that and, you know, it wasn't nothing that it wasn't nothing that he was going to... He wasn't going to make it so Kiss was going to play the indoor show. He, he doesn't have those powers, so... Um, but the photo thing, eh, I understand they don't want to stand around in the booths all the time. Well, if you look at the photos from the kiss cruise, they're from the waist up, you know, these guys, they could stand in their regular shoes, you know, and do all the photos and stuff. So, um, you know, that was one thing. And then the takeaway that the, but you know, one of the things that's so special about the cruise is you, you're seeing them in a small capacity room and to have those seats up front, it's just incredible. And the fact that that was, I, I'm not one of these people that's going to show up three, four hours early, sit in the sun just to get close to the stage for a general admission pool show. So, you know, all things, it was kind of a bummer too, because the boat was going to Belize and Honduras, which are places I've never been before um but it all came back it all worked out and uh we went on the cruise again and it was a great time i'm glad i went that's great yeah i i concur i I, i've said this to anyone who will listen you know i've i've been on all 10 and this one is either the best or right up there man this one was really really fun and i gotta give it up to uh sixth man and and norwegian cruise line and obviously the hottest band in the world um frank you know you can stop me at any time here but i thought especially if you guys were try paying, frank try to stop them no <laughs> but if, if 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 you guys remember the jericho cruise took off a week before the kiss cruise yeah and, and i don't follow that i don't remember chris is a friend of ours and he's a great guy and everything but you know i don't follow that sort of genre i mean look i know a lot of fans who watch the show do and i think it's awesome but it was just kind of out of my wheelhouse anyways they start seeing all these like covid nightmares about the testing and the long lines and horrid all these horror stories so when i got there i was like oh my god now just to let everybody know because i've had more than a few people ask me everybody on the ship had to take a test like four days prior mike what's that called p pts or sort of uh the p pcr PCR test is the test that takes 20 24 to 48 hours to get a really accurate result. Yeah. The the uh, fast test has questionable reliability. All right, but anyways, just so you guys know, on, on Monday, and, and, and Liz and I left um, to go to Miami on Thursday, and we boarded on Friday. But anyways, and, and, I, and again, I thought they did a great job with that. We took our tests here in, in Michigan. Um, and we, you know, we printed off our things. We get in line 
and the line went was very, very, very underlined at three times well run. Um, don't get me wrong, you, it still took a couple of hours for the entire boarding process, but they added that extra hump where we had to, you know, take a COVID test now, but it was, it was handled very well. And then, you know, after we did that and, and you got screened, then they allowed you, allowed you to board. And, you know, you had to, again, you know, scan your, uh, your carry-ons and stuff. But I mean, it was just very, very, it was very, very well run, very well organized. And I know a lot of people across the country are, whenever they go anywhere, they're experiencing, you know, staff shortages. I didn't notice a single staff shortage from the time we got there to the time we got off the boat. Uh, the boat was very, and, and I'm just going to, I'm telling you the honest guy truth, because if it sucked, I'd tell you. Um, we got on the boat, no problem. We probably had the best porter we've ever had, and, and all of them have been excellent, but we had a really good one for our room. Um, the, the food was plentiful. The drinks, like, like Frank was saying, you know, they had the open bar, um, <laughs> Man, and, and, and look, I wish all my, my friends, you know, from, you know, your, I wish Adrian and, and Pierre and, and, and Darren and Ash and, you know, and all those guys, Alex, I wish all of them were on the boat. But, you know, the fact was there's about a thousand fewer people than normal. I got to admit, man, it was nice getting an elevator. You didn't have to wait for stuff. You walked right up to the bar. You got your drinks. The, the merch thing flowed well. I'm telling you, 10 out of 10 for this cruise, uh, just for convenience. And uh, we can talk a bit, especially Frank and I, because I, I don't know his opinion on it. But, um, you know, I thought the shows were great. I thought the the bands were were really good. Um, it's just, I, again, I'm still, I still have a cruise high from this one. I had so much fun. Cannot wait to do it again next year. Well, let, let me ask both you guys, and I don't want you to go into great detail on this, but once you were on the ship and the ship was sailing, was there anything different that was being done because of COVID protocols on the ship? Um, I don't I don't, I don't think so. I mean, there's certain no. things that, that were, that maybe you couldn't do like you, you could last time, like, you know, those special cups that they put out every day, you just bought those in the merch because they didn't want the lines of people at the bar to get them every day. Small things like that. Frank, but, uh, I was told the cup thing was because so many people complained. Oh, really? See, I didn't yeah, know it had nothing to do with COVID. They just okay. did just for everybody that knows. Matter of fact, my cups. Complain are about what? It's a, it's a cup. No, 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 because a lot of people would buy, I know personally, I know people, I, I believe they put a special drink in it every year. And a lot yeah. of people are going, you know what, I, I'm, I'm dumping it out. I don't drink alcohol sure. or I find it gross. No, it was a legitimate complaint. And, and lots of people said, hey, can we just buy the cups? And they're like, no, you got to get it with the drink. Well, this year, they're like, you know what? We're just going to sell the cups in the merch booth. And then that ends that whole problem. And that was what had nothing to do with COVID. And that was told to me by somebody from Sixth Man. Oh, wow. See, I heard differently. But that makes all the sense in the world. Um, did they sell as much as they normally would? Because they did them that way. I don't know. You know, the whole, I've, I was told there's tons of cups left. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's the whole buzz of going at, yo, you got to get to the bar this time of day and go get that. Oh, I know it's not. But I will say this about the cups. They were the coolest cups that I've ever seen on the boat because every year it's either, you know, one day's red, one day's blue, one day's yes. green, one day's purple, or one, they're black cups with that color ink on them. This year they did like a white clear cup with the Psycho Circus um, graphics printed in white on the cup. But when you put your drinks and, and the ice in the cup, one cup changes purple, one cup changes green, one cup changes red. So they, they're sick. They're, they're totally like the coolest cups they did this year. And I, I believe me, I wasn't mad about paying five bucks a cup than whatever they were charging with the drink uh, in the prior years. Well, sure. yeah, yeah, I mean, that, you know, this, this, this year you got the alcohol free and you had to buy the cup. Sure. <laughs> sure. And I will tell you, as far as uh, merch things that they gave us this year, boy, they, they fucking ramped it up, baby. They oh. ramped it up. Yeah, the robe, the robe, the the silk I robe. Happen, I happen to have one right yeah, here. There you go. This is on the back of the robe. Yep. 
black is that, silk. Is, is, is that like an actual embroidery patch or is that a silk yes. screen? Beautifully, beautifully no, embroidered. Well done. Yep. Look at that. Yeah. It's a nice. And on the front, on the front crest is the same thing. It's got that. I think it says Psycho Circus Kiss Cruise 10, right? Y yes, correct. And it's but black, very, yes. Black silk. Silky black. Yes. So it really goes, goes well with your blue Speedo. <laughs> oh, you should have. But look, man, the girls were raging. They're like, oh, my God, there's the round Adonis. And I was like, you know what I mean? I was like, what's that? Uh, what was that one? Raging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, homework question. If you were a girl and you were on the Kiss Cruise, did you rage for Mark? Oh, <laughs> how dare they? Did even one person <laughs> other than Liz rage for Mark? Yeah, a bunch, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet the person that raged for Mark. Hold on, must the have been women. money. The women. Yeah. Well, Tommy, Tommy, quit ruining it. <laughs> Hundred dollar bills will do great things for you. So, <laughs> well, did they know that it was a one dollar bill and you just scribbled one hundred hey, in the look, corner? Look, right? after after a few drinks, they don't know. <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, also, too. Um, you know, and, and by the way, I'm doing it this way because I did read a certain comment on our page that I don't do show and tell well. That the ah, lovely and well, that's very true. <laughs> we know there's no denying historically, Mark is not well known for show and tell. I no, bet he's not failed, good at it. You bet you probably failed that in kindergarten. I probably did. So, anyways, here's here's another, and again, this was the good part. And I, and again, I'm I'm being totally serious. No, this was only like, I think, 10, 15 bucks. That's pretty sharp. My point is, if you went on the cruise and you wanted to get something special, you know, and I'll show you the back. It's very cool. You know, these are the kind of collectibles that I think are cool because everybody, they're very affordable. I mean, if you just went on and you want, you know, I want something to remember the cruise by. And this thing's heavy, too. Meeting Mark wouldn't be enough. You have to go buy a coin. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I thought that was a really, really cool, uh, really cool thing. I, I One thing I didn't like so much in Frank. I, Frank, are, did you buy much merch? I got a few things. Yeah, I, I got I got a shirt before the cruise that you can yeah, order. Too, right? And then I got I ended up getting a shirt there and I. Ended up getting the cups. I always get the poker chips. I got the bucket hat. There were some things I got. Only thing I, this is, this is something that came in our room. Yep. And again, these, these things, the robe in this poster are things that came in the room. You didn't have to buy. This is just part no. of being, being on the kiss cruise. Now, and the only thing that I don't like about this, again, I'm not crazy about the art. I, I'm the, the clown thing. Just, eh, eh, just ain't my thing, you know? so um but this is what the shirts most of the shirts yeah you know, I, 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 now, now see i i while i'm not a huge fan of the, that record but I, I do enjoy the themes of the cruises um so i thought that a lot of the merch looked really good this year i got the shirt with the shark on the front and um you know there was a lot of cool stuff this year between the cups and the merchandise and they always do cool things i mean and that holy grail thing that we got in our room which i hope oh, i'm you still have, gonna yeah, yeah i, I got it i'm waiting for you to show that so um another thing and I, they've passed these out every cruise and i love these i never opened mine surprise surprise but i i love these dog tags yep and again, these are things that they just give to us. Sure. And the luggage tags before the cruise. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I was going to get to uh, get, cause you get this thing like a month or two before the, yes. before the cruise. And uh, just like Frank was talking. And of course, of course you get these, I never wear mine. I didn't even take these out, but you know, this is, and I, this has some si significance in a few minutes. It'd this be great, is, though, uh, if it, it, it'd be great if they, if they actually put the, um, this 2020 goodbye in that box for you oh it's trust me we have more than a few of us made uh, that joke but this, these are there these are like our, our little things that you wear around a lot of our, people our, do our ranks um, in the kiss navy if you will yeah I, i'm a ten star admiral myself and the lovely and talented are both um 10 timers and these are the luggage tags and it's funny because we still have our our luggage tags on from like the first couple cruise on cruises on our luggage they're pretty these are durable they're good 
but uh, yeah. these are the the new ones. And that's all freebies. Again, yeah, this is just stuff well, that after can... paying thousands of dollars yes, to get yes. on. <laughs> well, I, well, I tell you what, though, I tell you what, though, they don't have to do any of this. No, no, you, I, I get you it. You two are it. such homers. <laughs> When you break just, when you break it down, I mean per night per for the concerts and this year with the free alcohol and all the gifts, it's it's not that crazy, you know. Really. Absolutely. Well, do you think Absolutely. it was it more enjoyable because there was less people on the boat? I mean, I hate to do my European and international friends like this, Amen. but god, god damn it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I here's know. the funny thing, and I keep telling people if you look at the sail away shot, it doesn't look like there's a thousand no. left people at yeah. all if, oh, there, you know, if you're missing 400 people even or five it can make a huge difference just in the movability on the ship well but, but tommy that when we took the go ahead and look i mean uh, you know uh look at the picture it doesn't look any different for the most oh, i know part than it in, looked packed but it, it's easy yeah. to, and, and as packed as the shot looks it's easy to find elbow room on those on those boat shows which is um, nice but if there was a major event going on or something big was going on, like a, an activity hosted by the band member or, or uh, one of the bigger bands playing, there was people at them for sure. They, they, they drew a lot of people. But, but like, you know, like we were saying earlier, I mean, going to the bar, hanging out at the restaurants and all that. There was just in the elevators. There's just elbow room. How, and how, Mark, Mark did, did that help in getting your midnight bacon? Having oh, those let, people? We were, we were the total midnight bacon stars every single night. So much so that the that the head chef brought it to our table. I even have pictures of it. Because the first night I went and I asked for midnight bacon, and they gave me a little bit of a problem. I'm like, oh no! I said, oh God. this. I swear to God. And uh, I said, go get your boss. And he's like, and the guy remembered us. He's like, oh no, you get get. You know, hold on guys i need to switch my internet connection real quick here okay. amateur yeah let me see hopefully this doesn't hang up on us you have more than one internet connection well i'm switching from wi-fi to my wired connection i forgot to i don't even that. know what that means that's something i know up. just just keep talking <laughs> bacon mark just keep talking bacon that's all you understand mark mark is more excited about meeting the bacon chef than he was gene simmons uh, you're pretty much right look how many times <laughs> do you get the head of the boats you know culinary department bringing you bacon and it was good crisp bacon the only thing that would make this better is if somehow we could arrange like on the next cruise to have Gene or Paul come out in a white tux jacket and deliver bacon to you at midnight. Uh, I'll put that on the list for, for future requests. So. <laughs> I'm sure they'll but, get right to that. Yeah, exactly. They'll be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waking up to feed Mark. <laughs> yeah. I will tell, I tell you, I tell you what though, uh, and, and the, our friends that we go every year with, they're, they're foodies. I mean, they, they, you know, matter of fact, when, when we go places outside of the Kiss Cruise, we, we try to hit really nice restaurants. And we all agreed really after the first night, we're like, you know what? They, Nor uh, Norwegian ramped up their food game. I mean, there was some damn good food on them. I mean, it's, it's usually, I gotta admit, you know, I've been on all 10. I don't ever remember the buffet not being, you know, at least acceptable, you know, but they really ramped up their game. They had some very exotic foods and they had, I, I like, uh, I like Asian dishes a lot and uh, man, they, they ramped up this great soup. Um, just, I couldn't get like every day. I was like Jones and for it. I couldn't wait. So um, like I said, the food was, was, was really, really good. And uh, you know, like, like, like uh, Frank said, you know, the, the lines weren't bad at all, you know, but getting back to midnight bacon. Yeah. We did it every night and we had a lot of fun and people were like, Hey, it's the midnight bacon, you know, people, uh, did you, did you, know, you have fans, did you have fans crashing the midnight bacon party? We, yes, we did. Uh, we did have people crashing the, the midnight bacon, wanting, uh, wanting a little bit of, wanting a piece of the uh, midnight bacon action, as they say <laughs> in radio land. Yeah. We got a piece of that, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was really nice, man. Um, and again, just that whole experience, the whole midnight bacon thing is always like, and as Frank will tell you too, <laughs> You know what was the toughest midnight bacon, Frank? And I'm sure you'll you'll know this. 
the night we had to go back two hours. Oh man, that really was bad. There, there, there was a couple that there was two downers about this cruise. Yes, yes. The two, the two hour difference going to Belize and then coming back really screwed us up. Cause I'm with the, you know, a lot, a lot of these people, myself included are in the bar party casino bar is where it's happening all night. So you're talking That's where we three, saw each other. <laughs> three, four, five in the morning, we're in there hooting and hollering. And when they're like, when it's 2 AM and they're like, okay, when it's, or when it's 4 AM, it's actually 2 AM and the bar is going to close. Cause it's really 4 AM. And it's like, wait, 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 what? You know, we're, yeah, we're this- on their hours. And that's- you're, you're, you're like, just how do I continue drinking? That's all I want to know. No, I know. And then I had to get up and do the pick throwing the next day. And I woke up and my, and my phone was still on Belize time. And I went to go eat. I didn't even, I was two hours behind and I almost missed it. And I, I was like, well, I went down to, it's a good thing. I went down to the buffet because I went down there and I go, where the hell, where the hell's the breakfast? Where the hell's the eggs? Where the hell's the bacon? Oh, let me try the buffet on the back of the boat. Wow. What the, where, why is the, why is the lunch out? And I go, Hey, what time is it? They're like, it's, it's one. And I thought it was 11 and I had to be in the stardust at a quarter after one. And I just had woke up. So I, I almost missed a big throwing with Gene, which I was a participant in. Um, it was crazy. That and then when we went to Belize from Miami, that boat was like the damn Titanic. I mean, it was like it, I've been on tons of cruises in my life. OK, at least 10, 11. And I've never felt anything like that. It was insane for hours and hours and hours. A lot of people were sick. Yeah, matter of fact, here's a, here's a funny line that is, is accurate. There was a longer line for the Dramamine than there was for the merch, and they ran out of Dramamine. That's a true story. They ran out of it. Um, well, and I'd heard but, that that you were looking at 10, 12-foot swales. That's 100. I have Liz videotaped it. I will tell you, both Liz and I and nobody in our immediate you know party of the people we hang out with got sick. So that was nice. I'll tell you what I did, and I highly recommend this to anybody. Also, I'm pretty blessed. I have a balcony, you know. I went out because if you're if Frank will tell you, that was in the middle of the night when we hit the, the roughest waves. And I just remember like getting almost thrown out of bed. I mean, that's how bad. And our door wall kept opening and closing, you know, slam, slam, slam. And all the hangers were going back and forth. Oh, back yeah. Forth. And anyways, I got up and I went and I sat on our deck. And I watched that thing rage. And I tell you what, it was pitch black outside. I'm looking over the railing and I'm watching, you know, I felt like Gary Sinise and, and uh, Forrest Gump, you know, <laughs> where he, where he jumped off the boat in the middle of the storm. It was very cathartic. It was really, really cool. There was no thunder or lightning. I think just huge fucking waves. And they were just, it was just really cool because we were on the 11th floor we're you know i was in one of the top and the and the and the splash coming off the front of the boat was like the mist would go over like where my room was it was violent it was crazy but i gotta admit it was kind of fun too <laughs> at least for me i i really enjoyed that part of it you know because i got out of bed going and you're fucking you know trying to stand up and you know i made it out to the balcony and sat my fat ass in the chair and just watched the water rage. And I got to admit, man, it was cool. Yeah. 35 mile an hour winds or something like that. It was, it was a bit much for, I know. And it continued into the next day and I think it ended around two in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Because matter of fact, they said, because they pushed some shows back and I want to address something too, that a couple of people talked about. And, And normally I don't share anything like this, but, um, some people were complaining that during Bruce's set, um, Eric went and uh, he played domino and he played and then got off and left. He, he went really fast because a lot of people don't know this. Um, they had to move all the schedules around. And Brent told me that Brent Fitz. Yes. Told me that that's why Eric came played. And then, you know, he didn't go out and shake hands. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, when they do those like guest spots, they'll, you know, walk in front of the stage, slap some hands, go play. You know, if they're a guitar player, they'll play that or the drummer. I'll go back. They were on a really, really super tight schedule because I think they moved another show in after Bruce because of the high winds. Well, didn't you say that Bruce had to cut a couple songs from his set? Um, Well, he was under a bit. They... They literally told them that day that 
hey, you got to, you know, move your, your, con, you know, condense your set. I don't know if he cut songs, but I do know that they cut they out. Had, maybe they cut out all the stage banter. That they yes, were gonna it do. was it was song, 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 song. I will tell you. Todd. Mark, Mark, oh. Mark, <laughs> the bass player, Mark. Oh, hello, there am I gone? You, 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 you froze up for a bit. You're back now. Did I really? Well, it must yeah. be your router, Mike. Mine. Oh yeah, fire. exactly. <laughs> that that that's why I mean, the three of us you, the I, three of us were sitting here talking and you were frozen. <laughs> I will tell you though I I I know this thing is not charged very well so it will snap it's but anyways uh just a nudge Brent's Brent uh, uh Bruce's band just fucking smokes that that was so good um you know and they they, they did a ton of stuff off Revenge um just i don't know everything about it was awesome and and then opening up with exciter both both sets um naked which was, city yeah yeah just those his shows were really really great um i loved i loved those so well let let's let's talk a little bit about the the kiss set and the bruce sets i mean you know uh Tommy and I touched on it real briefly last week. Um, Kiss pulled out a few deep cuts. I mean, real deep cuts. And in all and, fairness, we only knew the first set. We hadn't seen the second set at that time. We hadn't seen Bruce's second set, but I think we saw the second Kiss set. Oh, maybe recall. that's what it was. I don't. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know that Bruce did two full shows. Yeah. Yes. And he did different sets yep. for each show. Uh, we, we talked about the first set, which was just mind blowing. But then he came back and did another one. That second set was like almost all of revenge. Yes. Yes. And, and it was in not the make it on the ship. What's that? And the artists not make it on the ship. <laughs> well, I, I will say, and I don't know, maybe you two guys can contribute from being on the ship, but it is known Sebastian Bach didn't make it on the ship. Right. His band did. Sebastian Bach didn't. Right. Any? Do you guys hear anything about what was going on with that? How do you not make the ship if you're one of the, you know, featured performers? Let's just say I know when I'm not saying. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I mean, the, the 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 word on the boat was passport. Something with the passport. He was down in Miami. Something with the passport. Because I will say this: he was just playing in Orlando <laughs> last night. Yeah, you know, yep. he's in Florida. He just played um, the last night or the night before. So we'll we'll leave it at that. Yeah, <laughs> because right. I, you know, it, look, that's all personal stuff, and sure, I don't care. But uh, but any anyway, back back to Bruce and Kiss's set. So yeah, I mean that second set Bruce did was almost the entire Revenge album. Yes, absolutely. Yep, and then you know. One thing that's funny is they don't get to coordinate with Kiss to see what they're playing. So a lot of times they end up playing a couple of the same songs. Um, you know, they, Bruce's band did Tears Are Falling. I think Bruce's band did Making Love, which Kiss did the second set. So I know that they don't get to coordinate with Kiss and see what they're going to play. And, you know, so and I, it doesn't matter to me that those songs are played twice because I'd rather that than hear Cold Gin again. You know what I mean? This is the reason why I go on the boat. It's the number one reason that drives me to that boat um that being said I, I think that the kiss sets i mean look i thought they were going to phone it in for sure because they added all these shows after the west palm beach show that were makeup shows obviously fran passed away it's a terrible thing and they had a little bit of time to go home before the boat the last thing i thought that they were going to do was rehearse for this and pull out some songs but they i know they jammed on the boat and that's i, I don't mind that they jam on the boat nobody does but here they are again, doing what they always do on this cruise and pulling out these songs that they've never played before. And it's amazing to me because not a lot of bands do that. Not a lot of bands would take the time to do that. And we appreciate the shit out of it. Even if it is a botched up version of She's So European, we still love it. Um, and, and, and to hear, to see Take It Off, and you know, they, never, they never played well, that makeup to my knowledge. No, um, not me. And, and it's uh, great to hear you say one. that. Well, it's great to hear you say that too, Frank, just because when I was on cruise A, it was the same thing with Ace Fraley. And people that weren't even on the cruise were ripping him 
for his performance of some of these songs. But to your point, I loved it. I was like grateful that I got to hear those songs. And I think as long as you guys are on the cruise and you felt like you got your money's worth and you were happy with it, no one that wasn't on the cruise has any right to say a word. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, I think that Bruce is, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to say the cruise gets stale, but I mean, when you've been on it every year, I think the first time Bruce was on, it was just mind blowing. And I think that in everybody, including Kiss, knows that that's going to be welcome every time. And I think now going forward, it would be a bummer if they weren't on the boat because they, they're, they're, they're playing all those 80 songs that Kiss aren't going to, aren't going to play and any connection to the Kulik brothers um they'll, they'll rock them out and they'll do them well so and yeah and, it, it, it's it seems like with bruce doing the full sets he's you know basically doubling tripling the deep cuts because kiss couldn't do that many deep cuts there's no way kiss could do no. that many deep cuts and we know kiss isn't gonna do all of those songs from the 80s anymore so it's it's like it's it's actually perfect to have yeah. bruce there with a band, and let's be honest, his band kicks butt. They sound great. I mean, it's yes. really, I mean, there's there's some of those songs where it's like, is that Gene singing? Is that really? That's got to be Gene singing that. That, that guy song is incredible. Off of that guy is just what I can't I can't remember his name. Zach. 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 That's yep. I kept. Zach is a monster. He is. I mean, he is. that that is, and, and I tell you what I. Again, as you, if you haven't been able to notice, I'm still on a high from this thing. And because Kiss was so awesome, you know, Bruce was so awesome. So many awesome things happened. It was just so much fun. Um, I, God, I cannot wait to get back. on. I want to get back on now. I want to do it all over. <laughs> well, let, was, let me let me ask e each of you guys of the Bruce set, the songs in Bruce's set and of the deep cuts that kiss pulled out what was the one song that you each went whoa i can't believe that one for each set yeah, uh, yeah, one, yeah. one one for bruce one for kiss and what you know t questions to each of you guys from frank frank's our guest i'll let frank go first well for me you're always anticipating. And when I go on the boat, I've, I have such high hopes that I'm going to hear something I've never heard before or something that hasn't been played in a long time. Um, and if I don't get it, which is a rarity, I, I you know, I'm like, ah, I still got to see this. It was still amazing. Right out of the gate, when Bruce's band started playing Exciter, I, we're, we were a group of 16 this year, and that's a small group for us. So I looked at my, my people and I was like, whoa that opening, you know what I mean? Right out of the gate, we, we heard that. And we're like, holy crap. And we knew he was going to knock it out of the park with the singing because he talked, sing his ass off. And, and and it just kept happening. It just kept happening with that set. I was like, oh my God, Radar for Love and and all these songs. Um, that for sure, of uh, 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 Bruce's sets. And um, she's so European, for sure. Because I, I know Gene, I heard Gene was doing that in Australia or something like that maybe with his band or whatever, but I wasn't expecting to hear that. And and I think that was the first one maybe that they started playing of the rare cuts for that show. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that, and I wasn't expecting any, like I said before at all um, with everything that's gone out with them in the last month. That was great. I, I never thought I'd hear them play. We are one. I never thought uh, they'd be playing sacred off and makeup. So the fact that they did that, it was great. But for me, those two, she's so European when they started going into that, even though they botched the shit out of it, it doesn't matter. It, to me, it's, it's just as good as to see Gene and Paul shaking their heads and laughing at each other during it. It's just as good as watching them play it perfect. Um, you know, that's the beauty of it. Like, like you spoke about when, when Ace was on the boat. Um, that Those two, I would say, for okay. me. Mark? Well, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to 100% agree. Uh, exciter. Number one, I absolutely love that album. I love the Lick It Up album. Um, it caught me by surprise because I was expecting Bruce to start with Under the Gun or something, you know, from his era. And the fact that he did a, you know, a Vinny era tune first really like went, wow. And I'm like, you know, the gloves are off. He's coming out. To it, that, that's one thing that seemed cool about Bruce's set this year is it wasn't just Bruce era album tracks that he was playing 
He was yeah. doing stuff off of Lick It Up. He did stuff that Bob played on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, you know, making love. I mean, he just, he expanded it. So it's almost like he was, he was, he was going even deeper into the deep cuts than you would expect from Bruce. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he can, certainly. Can, Cat- yeah. He, yeah, he went through the catalog, and I gotta admit, uh, from the first night, um, I thought "We Are One" was the song of the set, just because Gene sang it so damn good. Um, he, I, I, I gotta tell you what, and 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 I'll get to this in a second because thank you, Frank. I was able to go to both shows, and um, that was the song that that hit me here the most just because a i didn't expect it you know i was funny because i could have found out ahead of time and i chose not to um and so i was i was surprised when they when i when they started it um and i thought gene sang his ass off now he's uh, frank's right he's so europe she's so european was just a train wreck and that that's up on youtube you can I, i think everything's up on youtube i haven't checked it out yet but um yeah, just and, and there's a and I'm going to come back to this. You know, they were fumbling it. Yeah, I'm happy they played it. I'm happy I got to see it. Um, but eh, I was happy it wasn't in the second set. Um, yeah, we are one of that. Yeah, we are one's the complete opposite. We are one. I loved. I thought Gene nailed. And it was just cool to hear it in that format with just the four musicians on stage, you know, cause that song and, you know, really has some kind of studio work to it. You know, it's a little bit more beautiful if you want. It was really raw. Gene sang it very emotionally. I thought it was really, really good. I, now, I, really now I, 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 Tommy and I briefly talked about this last week. I love, we are one. I remember when psycho circus came out to me, that was like the, hidden gem on that album that that really surprised the hell out of me of like showing gene's real deep influence of what was driving gene simmons as a musician i mean we are one is not a kiss like tune it's a more Beatles, it's more melodic it's you know but i loved it so when i saw they played it i'm like oh my god now i will admit watching the video i felt like it was one of the, and maybe this is completely just the video and you were there and you tell me differently. It felt like the, the energy of the song didn't lend itself to a live performance experience. They played it and they sang it great, but it's, you know, you always hear bands go, well, we love that song, but we tried it live and it just didn't work. You know, it didn't My- have the energy. It didn't captivate the crowd. We didn't I- feel it. Was it, was got, that anything like that with We Are One? I have a couple takes on that. I went to both shows as well, and I thought that the energy of the second show crowd was over the top compared to mm-hmm. first night. And I also think that everybody got on that boat and got completely hammered early on, and then maybe that's why night one people were dead or whatever. But, um, you know, the thing is, it's not one of those songs that's going to translate that uh, translate like that live. I don't think I, and that and the, half the places in awe that they're playing it. You know what I mean? Also, I think a thing that contributes to that huge is you for better or for worse. There was tons of first timers on this cruise this year. There 600. Was like, yes, exactly. The most that I recall from any cruise 600. I feel that the majority of them aren't diehards like we are and they don't know that song or they they want more of the hits i've seen the comments on the kiss cruisers facebook oh they i wish they would have played shout it out loud and all this they're, yeah they're, those people were on the boat that's for sure and they were plentiful this time so maybe it was too deep cuts for them um, too much of deep cuts for them i don't know but, um, frank, but I frank, frank nailed it that was my comment I, did the energy drop michael you that was a, a keen obs- observation it did However, what Frank said is exactly how I felt. My mouth was dry. I was like, that one stopped me in my tracks. If you were going rock and, you know, you wanted to rock, that one isn't one like that. No. That's a sit down and listen to it. Song. Yeah, that's that's an emotional song. Yes. And, it but that, and, and, and to your point, Mark, as a diehard Kiss fan, that would be the moment where I'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe they are even doing this song. Jaw dropping, yeah. silent 
just uh, take it in because they'll probably never play this song live right. ever again. I just wish they would play it not during the show, but during the end of the road tour, like right after people are leaving. You know, they walk out. God gave rock and roll to you forever. But the We Are One is such a, I think it's such a well crafted song. And it's so sweet to me personally as a Kiss fan that it, it, it deserves a place in that whole thing. And oh, yeah. I mean, hurts. I mean, I, I would encourage all of our listeners, go pull up We Are One, listen oh, to so it, good. but also, more importantly, read the lyrics. Pay attention to the lyrics of, of the song We Are One, because that is a song that when I heard it, I was like, this is Gene Simmons writing a song to me. Sure. And I see my fan. face looking back at me. I exactly. You know, so it's a very personal song for Gene. 